It is the Blue Room. It is your instant match reaction for Ipswich Town. Nil, Everton 2. The Blues get their first away win in the Premier League for 10 months. And it was very, very similar to the last time they won away from home in the Premier League, if we're being honest. Uh, joining me at the moment is Les Roberts. Uh, we may get some more people joining on to talk about that win as, as we go on. But but Les, you know, we were on sort of speaking this week, weren't we, saying it would be nice to stop one of those sorts of wins we had before Christmas um, again, where we get the first goal, we surrender possession and we just we just do a job. And, and, and yeah. that's exactly what it was. Um, 2 0 up at half time. And it just played out very comfortably in the second half while we didn't really have much of the ball, but it didn't really get the jeopardy or the feeling that we were going, we were going to throw it away. It was uh, it was all very much under control, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been a long time coming that, hasn't it? Um, I didn't get the jeopardy, but when he did the Bournemouth sub for him and die coming off in 80 minutes, it did get a little bit jittery. But um, yeah, just played really well. Just, you know, I think the second half we sat back a bit, but I mean, really in control for the whole game. It, it is just nice to get a routine. And like you said, you know, on Wednesday we were saying, you know, how do you think it'll go? Will it be what will the changes be to the team? And yeah, it, it all it all just played out perfectly, didn't it? I said this I said this morning on Twitter and on our Facebook channel basically about the, the whole Michael Keane situation, um, whereby he's been playing with an injury, Tarkovsky's been playing with an injury, and Jake O'Brien can't get in, which I still just find a bit mad. But you know, that was another good game for Michael Keane. I think he made one mistake. I think it was that that poor tackle in the first half to give them a free kick on the edge of the box. But apart from that, he, he was sound. The whole team was pretty sound. Uh, I'm sure we'll come on to his goal as well. But yeah, just just nice to get um, a routine win under our belt. I think that puts us, what, on eight points now, four points ahead of Ipswich. So, you know, it, it's it, it's looking a lot better already after after a really bad August. Just want to shout out to Frank Thomas on Facebook as well, who said he, he abandoned his usual 1-1, 2-1 Everton because he fancied us to do 2-0 and he got it right. That man knows toffees. Um, <laughs> just a reminder as well, if, you, if you're listening to this on uh, iTunes or Spotify, do leave us a rating, do leave us a review. Especially after the win, come on. Uh, we deserve yeah. five stars and a nice comment after the win. And if you're on YouTube as well, please do the same. Please subscribe, please like, and please do leave a comment. Let us know what you thought of the game, who you thought was really good for, for the toffees today. And let, let's start with Keen Les, because you know we've, we've done so many of these shows, haven't we, where we've, we've kind of come on and, and spoken about them in, in an extra sense of, but you know what? I, I do think the lad deserves a, a whole lot of credit because before that Newcastle game, when that team come out, especially after Branford being back as well and, and everything getting that first win, there was a lot of doom and gloom, wasn't there? And there was yeah. a lot of oh, Michael Keane again. Um, and here we are, two games later, two clean sheets later. He's rekindled the spirit of Marcus Bent, Marcus Bent down at Southampton with that finish on the end <laughs> today. Um, and like for, for all the stuff you can say about him and, and listen to his contracts up the end of the season, I don't think anyone's going to be saying give him a new deal or anything like that. Um, for all the things you can say about him, he, he is always always the ultimate pro, isn't he? He, he? he never never shirks it. You never hear any stories about him kicking off behind the scenes or grumbling about not not playing when he's been out the side. He comes in and, and always puts puts himself on the line at least. Yeah. And when the ball drops him in the box, you just know. You just know where it's going to end up. And again, another parallel with our last away win. Actually, it was Keane who scored the second goal that day. Oh, yeah, it was a great finish inside the box. So, yeah. And just, I just think he deserves loads of credit for the way in which he's handled himself. The last two games, in particular, where, he, where he's had to come back, he had to replace Bramford after the Golden Boy returns and, and gets us our first win. And, and he's, he's done it really well in what could have been difficult circumstances for him. Yeah, I think as you say, one thing you can never question with him is his, his character and his his willingness to just you know put himself forward to like I don't know be in the firing line really because you know you must know that he, he gets a lot of stick and as I said a lot a lot of time he is just a hapless footballer things just happen to him and he you know he, he does one thing wrong he gets punished for it a lot of the time um, and yeah he never you know you never hear any stories of him saying oh my confidence is taking a massive knock even when he was playing with his massive boot he didn't tell anyone about that until like a year later was it he just he just plays through this stuff and you know like you said i think he put on the whatsapp group didn't you is there another everton player who would have finished that with his weak foot i genuinely don't think another everton player would have finished that with the strong foot i genuinely don't think any of our strikers shoot from there so they take a touch try and cut it back probably lose possession you saw dwight mcneil in the first half uh, and died. Nice layoff to him, and he took that touch. He, now he would usually hit a first time, 
there, but for some reason he took a touch. And I think most players in that situation would have done that. But to hit that with his left foot, it was an unreal finish. You know, I, I saw some Ipswich fans blaming the keeper uh, on Twitter, but I, I don't care if it's at the near post. You're not stopping that. It was it was just a wonderful, wonderful shot. And you know, I am I am made up for him because it is a nice story that he you know he's coming through and he he does stuff like that because. One thing we can say about him, no matter how many defensive ricks he's had in him, the goals he scored. I mean, if you play the show reel of his goals, I don't think he scored a bad one. He just scores well. He's and you know, I'm being probably seventy five percent serious when I say stick him up front because I've seen people say he's not like he's not a striker. You need more about your game to be a striker and stuff. But I think if you've got someone in the box, you can hit it like that and will hit it like that. For all for all Calvert Lewin's sort of nice hold up playing that the lad can't finish. Michael Keane can finish. It's like they could be a perfect partnership, but maybe we won't go too far into that. Well, it's very similar, isn't it? The shot is is similar to the one that Dom has at Villa at three two. Like it's in a similar yeah. position. Like Calvert Lewin's obviously got a stronger foot and has, has to carry the ball a little bit, but it's the same sort of angle, isn't it? Yeah. I think Dom obviously tries to do the same thing that day, doesn't he? Where it's the going across the keeper, he tries to go high and catch him out, and it obviously ends up hitting the bar with. Whereas Keane doesn't, and I think that, I think that's what does for the keepers. And I think he's, you know, he'll probably have that split second thing in his head of this is a centre half and it's weaker foot. I'm going to yeah. set myself low for a shot that's going to be right at me or a cross goal. Like he's not expecting that to, to be high, yeah. hit that hard above, above his head. You know, it's like that. That's like a Harlem finish, isn't it? That left foot yeah. just it's smashed the goal really hard. Well. Yeah, it yeah, it was, post, yeah. It? just incredible. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was ridiculous and. He's um like you said, he's obviously scored he's got this with his left foot against Palace, didn't he, in that three two game as well. Yeah. Um, from, from amazing Holgate to knock down. And just, just one other thing I wanted to, to bring up actually, and you know, again, you know, I'm, I'm not um erasing all the issues of, of Key and, and Dice here, but just going back to something the manager said after the Palace game, actually, that he, he got a lot of stick for. Um and he was talking about it was after Brantley came back into the team, wasn't it? And people you know, he got asked about and I think mean, he made a point of talking about Keane and, and, and you know saying he, he'd done well and wanted to keep his, his confidence up. And I suppose little things like that at the time, people might look at it and go, that's a bit of a weird thing to, to come out and say. Yeah. You know, he's not been in the team. We've been conceding loads of goals. Maybe maybe it is still a little bit weird. Maybe it had nothing to do with today. But I suppose like little things like that like can make a difference, can't they? Especially to a player like Keane, who you know, we've spoken about a lot down the years, has got very fragile in, in terms of his, his confidence and when it goes, it seems to go very quickly. So, just maybe just a little nod to the manager there as well for for saying something at the time that, that felt a little bit weird, but in hindsight, yeah. maybe it looks like it's made a bit more sense. Yeah, I mean, that, it, saying stuff like that, Dice is really sort of setting himself up to be like lashed out, isn't he? Uh, you know, when we've conceded that many goals leading up. But you're right, it's um, you know, it could just be good man management. You know, you've got to you have got to keep players' confidence up, haven't you? Even when they're going through a tough spell. Now, players aren't stupid. So, you know, Michael Keane will know that, you know, he's had a bit of a bad time with it those first few games and in pre-season as well, to be fair. But it is nice to hear, like, positive feedback, isn't it? So even if, you know, you're having a tough time, if someone's like, you know what, you're doing all right, just keep your head up. It's like, it is nice to hear. So, yeah, it could just be good man management. Um, Brantwood comes straight back in, though, doesn't he? Well, it might, it might have been one of them in hindsight as well, might know where the manager might have known straight after Newcastle that Brantwood's had... Um, sorry, at the Palace of Brantwood and injury, yeah. maybe you felt like you have to you have to say, but but yeah, I mean Brantwood does come back in, but, but I mean I think there's a question around Keen Tarkovsky. Maybe this maybe we can get into that in, in the week at, at some point. Now is maybe not the time for that, but um, and just just in terms of the the, the game overall, Les, um, obviously we we, we were already ahead by the time Keen scored, um, and Dai I, I thought was great again today. Um, just sniff around in the right place, wasn't he, at the right time? They make it obviously a mistake and, and, and he absolutely lashes it home. But I think in addition to his goals um, as well today, just he just gives you so much valuable stuff, doesn't he? Certainly away from home when you're trying to see it yeah. out. And it's like it's what makes that Bournemouth sub all the more mad because you, you see him now as somebody who gives us an outlet, can win a free kick, can just, just keep the ball in, in tight situations. Um, and he, he's looking more and more like an, an absolutely superb signing for us, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I mean, you wonder how like bad stuff off the pitch at Marseille must have been, or whether you know the players they had were like absolutely remarkable because it, it's it's absolutely crazy that we've managed to sign him for like what fifteen million was it something like that? 
Have they replaced Mo him with Mope? Like that, that seems I hope weird. So. <laughs> I don't think so. But it, it's just uh, he's just a wonderful footballer, isn't he? And like you say, away from home, it's not just the good work on the ball. He does a hell of a lot of running off the ball. He'll always track back and he wins loads of free kicks as well. He's like, he, he's just got that. He just takes that quick touch that defenders can't keep up with and he wins a free kick and away from home, you can't like, you can't put a price on a player who does that because it just breaks breaks the game up nicely, which you always want to do away from home. You don't want the home team getting into any sort of rhythm, especially a team like Ipswich who, I know they were poor, but their game is all about passing and moving, short balls, isn't it? It's like keeping possession. They play a lot of possession football. So if you can keep breaking that up, that immediately throws a team like that off the stride and they can't really cope with that. I think I think Everton did that really well today. Um, I was a bit worried second half when they started sitting back and thinking, letting them play it round, but they dealt with it really well. Um, and I think Endai, he's, he's key to that because he's, he's an outlet. He'll track back. He'll win fouls. He's just he's, he's the most exciting player we've had in years, isn't he? He's like, he's definitely, I've said this about when I've seen him at home, he's like, He's a get you off your seat player. As soon as he gets the ball and runs with it, everyone's up. And uh, yeah, his finish was great. I think today, if there's two players you want the ball to fall to in the area, it's probably on Dying Keen. And they both. What a contrast. Really it? It's mad, yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, the two of them are really good finishers, aren't they? And it was, they were both, two both really good goals. I think the Ipswich defence will probably have to certainly look at themselves for the first one because there was just panic when the ball dropped from a corner, I think, wasn't it? Um, the ball just dropped in the area and, and the defenders and the keeper just panicked um, and Dai picked up on that and lashed it in. I know just, just on the, the keen goal as well, great work from McNeil there. It was it was some lovely, lovely footwork. Um and yeah, it, it yeah, it, it was just it, it was just nice to see the team playing with that confidence and that that fluidity against the team who, you know, on paper maybe could have passed it round us all day and put more pressure on us. They just dealt with it really well. Yeah, I think um, Chris Smith, who's obviously someone we know well, put about that second goal put on Twitter. Never thought I'd see an Everton goal scored by Batistuta, set up by David Silva. But that's, that's, that's what it was like, wasn't it? You know, McNeil was little twinkle toes on the edge of the box. And the, yeah. you know, that was a Batistuta trademark, wasn't it? That high near post finish, like smashed yeah. in, um, which, which Keen replicated. But no, I think I think you made a good point there about the, the way they, they play. And I'm, I'm, to be honest, I've not seen loads of them this season, but. Like I think on paper, you look at their, their certainly their wingers and um, Hutchinson and Clark, and the, the, those sorts of players aren't they? Where you think on on their day they can be quite dangerous and, and cause your issues, but the, they're also quite flaky and can be yeah. a little bit confidence players. And, and I just thought like every time one of those two started to try like get in the game a little bit, our correspondent fullback, be it Young or McNeil, like did something really well to kind of just shut them down and. In, you know, I think the, the, there were moments each. I think in the first, I think Young did really well against Clark in one duel, which kind of just all the crowd was up, ready for Clark to go past them, and then Young just took the ball off him, and they all sat down. It's well then, you know, we've been there, haven't we? As fans, you go, oh. yeah. And then the second half, I think Hutchison's got driving through. Everyone's all excited, and Michelenko just takes the ball off him. And I think just those little moments like that, where I think in a newly promoted team, where there is potential for the atmosphere to be up and for them to get on top here a, a little bit. Yeah. Just sapping those little bit of bits of momentum at the right times with a good, you know, steady bits of play is really important. And I think I think we did that that pretty well throughout the team today. But I think that the two fullbacks in particular, again, who've been, you know, I well, mean, not young so much recently. I think Young's been playing really well actually the last few games, yeah. hasn't he? But, but certainly Michelin. Yeah, uh, he's, he's having a decent season at the, at the minute. It's yeah, like, I mean, he's, he's played like more four, good games than that. Four games in a row now, you could say. He's been yeah. uh, less than the way he was set. He was really good. Yeah. Newcastle, he was fine Newcastle. today. He was, he, was, he was absolutely fine again. Like, he, you know, he's just he's just coming in and just being all right and solid, isn't he? Which is kind of, kind of the theme. Of what we've been back, to be honest, oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll get we'll get Dave in now. He's just uh, yeah. he's just arrived. Um, just quickly on uh, on yeah. just there. He was. I think there was about 10, 15 minutes spell in the second half, to, like the the Mikalenko tackle you talked about there, where he was getting loads of the ball. Um, didn't do much with it. I think he hit one crossing that just went over the Ipswich players' heads. But that one you talk about, I've seen uh, Michelenko get rinsed a few times this season. I mean, against Brighton, he got rinsed by uh, the winger there. Was that Minter. The one got turn? Yeah, yeah, Minter, yeah. Um, and I thought he was going to do the same because he turned him about two or three times. But to his credit, Michelenko just stood him up nicely and got his foot in at the vital time. So, yeah, I think I think both, as you say, both fullbacks probably dealt with them really well today. 
Uh, Dave joins us now. Um, Dave, just talk about the, we've already done our Michael Keane Harlan comparisons. Um, you can you can come on to that a bit later on if you want. But um, just yeah, talk about the game, the performance as a whole. Just just really competitive, professional, and, and made really good, solid interventions when when they were needed. I think to stop Ipswich's momentum. How did, how did you feel it went? Yeah, I think that's spot on. Just listening to you as there before I come on. Um, you know, it's the, it's the kind of performance that you're <coughs> screaming. Where's where's that been? Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a kind of the, the way in which we played, how how sharp we were going forward. Um, didn't didn't feel to me like a conventional Everton counter attacking performance. I thought we had the ball a lot more than I expected us to in, in an away game. I know Ipswich is a newly promoted side, but I still would have expected them to have more chances than we did. Yet they only had two shots on target all the way through the game. Um, I, and I thought you know the, the midfield performance as well looked a lot more. Solid than what we've seen so far this season. Um, I thought that the Corey looked a, a lot more what you want to see from him. I know he wasn't playing in a role that he's particularly used to, but I thought when he's a little bit deeper, along with, with Gay alongside him, um, that there seemed to be something that was much more reliable for them to have the ball in midfield, easily to lay it off, easy to find it to one of the sides with Andai and Harrison on the other side. Um, it's it's an away performance that. It felt a little bit to me, I don't know if you guys agree with this, a little bit of an away performance of old, really, where Everton knew that they had they had plenty of time to create chances and they actually did that. Rather than under dice, we've seen so many where it's been frustrating that Everton would have been happy to take a nil-nil draw away at Ipswich. And look, don't get me wrong, I, if you'd offered me a draw at the start of this game, I probably would have taken it. Um, to, go, to go there and be as prolific as we were in front of goal, Issue with Calvert Lewin, I think missing the chances that he did, I think that that's something that is going to be an underlying issue that we have most ways through this, through the season now, depending on what he does in his future. Um, but by by and large, I mean that, how much was that was needed, uh, particularly after an international break. We're not we're not notoriously a, a decent side when we come back after the um, after the internationals. So to get that in the bag, go back to Goodison as well in the next game. That, I mean that that's a huge three points to take for us. That. Yeah, I think the, we said about the midfield is interesting as well because I think that was the best Idris Gage played for me this season. Like that, you know, defensively, he thought he was he was good, tenacious, and then he did really well to lead a, a break in the end of the first half. So we like stepped over the ball and, and carried it forward, and it was a bit like what he was doing towards the, the back end of last season. And I think he's, he had a few little knocks, hasn't he, at the start of the season? He's had he obviously he's had some some personal trauma as well, hasn't he? Where he's, he's obviously had to go back and <coughs> to Senegal and you know. I have to grieve over you know, an immediate family member, but um, it, ju- it just felt like Les today that coming back from the international break again, maybe being with Senegal, he, he was he was properly on it today, and I was surprised that that it was um, that it was the Corey who stayed in ahead of Mangala because I think Mangala's been been sound recently, but um, in Ghana and and the Corey, maybe not a natural parent, but just again just mature, solid, did the right things at the right times, and just just really got a grip on that area of the pitch. Yeah, I think he said in midweek, didn't he, that he's he's probably still our best midfielder, to be honest, Garner. Um, and I think he showed today um, that you know he's 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 not just really good at doing that break up play. I was very surprised to see him do that step over and that little three ball at the end of the half. It was like on, on my stream, I genuinely <laughs> thought it was in the eye. I was like, he's on the left hand side. <laughs> yeah. It must be him. And I was like, oh, he's on the right hand side, running into the box. Who is that? Yeah, oh, it was mental. It was it was brilliant. Like, yeah, you know, he, that was a. It's an unlikely pair in that, but it, it did well. I I said in the week, didn't I? I thought and I get dropped. Um, the core a push up McNeil go out wide, and then it'd be Mangala and Garner in the middle. So I was surprised to see the two of them there. Um, the core and and Garner, but yeah, it's it. They, yeah, they did really well. They did everything they needed to in that game. You know, the core looked uh, looked pretty solid as well. Didn't really misplace too many passes as I remember, which is unusual. Um. I think it's just nice that we've got options there now as well. So, you know, James Garner's out injured, not the end of the world. We've got more bodies to go in to the degree where we can drop a player like Mangala, who's been playing well, um, you know, the last few games. So it it is nice to have options to like that don't disrupt or weaken the midfield. Or obviously Eric Boone as well, but he's injured at the minute, I think, is he? Um yeah, but, you know, for a few weeks, yeah. Yeah. But there's a there's a lot of options there now, which which is really good. And you know, I'd like to think that the, the, the momentum that we're building up now um, sort of bodes well for this run of games we've got, which, you know, 
a lot of people are saying, we, well, we have got to pick up points in these games because December's horrible. But this is by no means an easy run of games. We've got coming up, we've got tricky sides to play in there, you know, not least Fulham next week. Uh, even though it's at home, it's going to be a tricky game. So it it is nice to see players picking up form, playing well together, some nice partnerships all over the pitch. You know, I don't think that's going to be a long-term partnership with the core and Garnet, but did well enough today to be confident that, yeah, we can use that going forward in games. So, yeah, it, it, it was good to see. And, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Matt. I think uh, Garner was really, really good today. I'm glad we didn't sign uh, Calvin Phillips as well on the evidence of oh, today. He's, uh, for that haircut. Oh, my God. He absolutely stunk the gaff out, didn't he? Um, but just um, just D- Dave, you sort of mentioned Calvaloon in passing there. Um, I was going to sort of ask you both, did, did did he play well today? Like, it, it feels like one of them where if you look at, if you look at the, like, I, I'm, I've not seen any player ratings for this game yet, but I, I imagine if someone gave him a five, you could say fair enough. But I also think if someone gave him, a, like, a seven and a half, eight, you could say fair enough because there's was, there was so much good in his game. Like, he yeah. dominated the centre-backs, hold the play was yeah. great, carrying the ball, fantastic. Movement of the ball was really good. Like, he creates a couple of chances for himself, but it's you know, those two one-on-ones, isn't it? He has the chance to, to put the cherry on the cake right at the end there. There's, there's one in the first half, which he misses when it's nil-nil. Um, so there's so much good in there that was sort of been completely underscored by two really bad misses. Um, so they know, just a really mixed day for him, wasn't it? Yeah, he, it, he's very Jekyll and Hyde, isn't he, at times? And, and look, you, you'll have people screaming at this pod when they listen to it on our, or on our YouTube channel saying, well, that's what he's there to do. He's there to score goals. But I, I, I think you're right. I, I, I'm sort of siding more towards the there was an efficiency that looked in how he was able to create those chances, how he was able to be in those positions. Because... You see that a lot with strikers who get in those positions, and it, it takes them a while to get going. Um, it looks more blatantly obvious with us because he's the only one we've got. It, it's not like we're able to say, "Oh, do you know what? It, it, it'll be better than the next game because he'll get more chances, and we've got somebody else who will score the goals." Make no mistake, we've waited for Michael Keane to slot an absolute won the goal in order for us to go in front in this game, um, and and that that's why I'm still annoyed by him really annoyed by him because he's better than that. He's much better than that. Um, I think if you're not an Evertonian, you, you're probably thinking that Dominic Carver lewin isn't isn't the sort of striker that you want on your side. I know being linked with plenty of clubs at the end of this season, Newcastle being the one, wasn't it, that everyone thought he was going to be going off to. Um, if you're one of their fans watching that, you're thinking, why are we going to have a look at this fella? But then I think what you've said also in that there's such, there's such a prolific striker in there, and we've seen it maybe just for one season that year under um, Ancelotti, where you're looking at when he got what, 20 goals or whatever it was, over 20 goals, you're thinking that's the only time it's happened. I think you look at those stats and you think, well, if he can only do that once, then he's not really at the level that we want to have at our club. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a bit of an enigma to me. I, I feel as if when one of those goes in, that traditional saying where he's going to go on and just go on a run scoring all the time. He doesn't feel like that either. It's, it, it, it's really strange when it, it's it's that that question you've asked me there. I think you've worded it so perfectly. In that, do you say do you say he's played poorly because he's created chances to score goals for himself, or are you saying that he's crap because he can't finish the chances that are in place to score? And I don't know. He, re- he wrecks my head so much when I see that lad. Because let's face it, he's the only one we've got in in those positions and. Um, I have a lot of sympathy with that. Today, though, look, he, we've got away with him not scoring what chances he probably should score. The one in the first half, we've seen it several times where he goes through one on one and it just hits it straight to the keeper. And I'm thinking, how has he not learned those lessons? What is he, 27 now, Matt? I think he's mid, well, maybe mid to late 20s. Um, should be pretty obvious for him to finish that. If you're a Premier League striker, he should be rounding the keeper. Some doing something else rather than just telegraphing and and saying, look, keep it just dies to the to the obvious side, but he's going to try and slot it. Um, you can't say to him now. There's a lot to learn at this this late in the day with him as the A's he is. But <clears throat> you know, it, it'll be interesting what happens when when Bros is fit. Does he is the is there a more competitive edge to what he wants to do? I think he's fine with every other part of his game that you hinted at. Um, he, he's able to lay it off. He's able to get in the box when he needs to. And yeah, I mean, it it's it's hard to get on his side when you're creating chances like that. It's just they they're crucial for us given the situation we're in. I think 
I think for me, I think Brody being fit will be a really interesting one because if we take out that Ancelotti season with Calvert Lewin where he, he scored like <clears> of <throat> goals and looked like a proper like poacher in the box, yeah, his strength have always been hold up play and bring them players into the game. The problem we've always had is there's no one close enough to him. So he wins a flick on. He has to chase it down himself. Now, potentially, Rose is fit. They play as a two. Obviously, then you've got the questions of does McNeil move out wide and Dyer gets dropped because he's going to have like two up front. Does McNeil get dropped and then Dyer stays out wide? Probably more likely with Dyer. But, or does like Rose just replace Calvert Lewin? It, it's, there's a, again, there's options there when he's fit. Um, but, but yeah, you can't. You can't forgive a striker for missing four one-on-ones in two games. There's the two against Villa and there's the two today. You can't forgive a striker for that. It's not mm. You've got to score at least one out of four because that's terrible, not doing that. Um, but perhaps we, if we're going to be playing them every game, we need to play to a strength more and get more players around them because I think that's that's been a big fault of the team for years for me, that no one's played close enough to him. Not as bad as it used to be, and certain seasons where the heat maps were like him up front on his own, everyone else was miles away. Players are, we've got more of an attacking team now, but I do think we do probably need to play to a strength better and get and just say to at least one player from that sort of front three, just get dead close to him. As soon as that ball goes up, just run in behind him to, to win the, when he wins the flick on or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think the, yeah, the missing those one on ones, it's, it's just not good enough. And you know, against Villa, it cost us. I think he's just going to be one of them. I mean, like this is very basic to say, but I just think he's always going to be quite crap at one on ones. Like it just like and and the interesting thing about the one on ones that you mentioned there, last, like the four, like you, it's almost like every time he's tried to do something different. Like one, he's tried to like curl it into the corner, and the keeper saved it. One, he's tried to give the keeper the eyes today, and he's, the trailer of foot um, keeps it else. There's one against Martin as where he tries to go around the keeper and the defender mm-hmm. comes back and and stops him. So it's like. It's like he's trying to do different things for each one, and, and like yeah. nothing's nothing's really working for him at, at the moment. Yeah. I, just, I just think it's always going to be like a, a part of his game, which is just it's probably why he's, he's still playing for us, and he's not got that that huge move to, to somewhere else because he's not got that cold blooded yeah ability when he's got time. I think that shows, doesn't it, that you know he, he's not he's not that top end striker because any top level striker basically will have something that you do on a one on one. So no matter what way they're going at this one-on-one, they will have a technique, whether it's hit it early, get around a keeper or whatever. They they will know when they get in that situation, this is what I do and this is our score. Like you say, he's tried four different things there and none of them have worked because he obviously doesn't know the best thing to do in a one-on-one. And like you say, David 27, you're not really going to be able to coach mm-hmm. that now, I don't think. I wouldn't mind him seeing like trying to do like the like dink in a few more times. Like he did that against Bournemouth, didn't he? And score. I know that I know the situation of that goal meant he doesn't have to because the keeper was really close to him, but I like tried, tried the especially that second one. I just thought, you know, it's two 0 You're running on the angle. The keeper's charging out. Just, just try and just like you know, get your foot under it and, and lift it a little bit. But I don't know. Just, I think it's just going to be one of those things that he's always going to struggle with. But what, what I've also think has been quite interesting. I think since Bournemouth game, when we've been every game we've been involved in, which has been in the balance, the manager's not turned to better. I think Dom's played every game, hasn't he? Every minute of, of the game, so. Mm-hmm. It feels like that chaotic cameo from from Beto against Bournemouth is is maybe the end of him, um, and certainly until until Roy is fit again. Um, just just before we wrap up, just a couple of um, interesting moments. Um, first one, Harrison's pass back in the first half. I mean, oh my word, what what was going on? What was going on there? With Pickford so far out of his goal. That was one of the wildest bits of plays I've ever seen you know, from a from player. Do you know what I do you know what I buzzed off about that though? Pickford did all the hard work of like <laughs> running out to meet the ball, took it past the player. Then he realised it was on his right foot to clear it and just panicked and lashed it at Ashley Young. Yeah, it was yeah. just for Young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Harrison is like, yeah, just put it anywhere else, mate. Just don't do that. Yeah, and um, I thought it was funny on, when okay, um, sorry. with sorry, mate. I was just going to say with with Pickford, the thing for me is he's he's you just know for the fact he's relished that when when he's seen that happening. I thought he's like, this is my time to shine. I want to get out there. I want to control it, and I want to do something with this ball. He's just that type of lad, isn't he? He's just that type of player. But he's absolutely good. It was on his right foot because he'd be he'd be trying to play like a 60, 70 yard pass to put us in, um, and he's the one. He's the one who gets an assist. But yeah, I mean, don't be doing any more of that, Jack, because uh, 
You know, <laughs> other, goal, other goalkeepers wouldn't come out and get that. By the way, other goalkeepers would like, just stay on the line. It would have been like a like a, the maddest own goal I think I'd ever yeah. seen. But um, and the other <laughs> thing as well, um, their penalty that was given. I mean, <clears throat> I'm sure, like me, you were all thinking after two that weren't given oh, for yeah. us exactly like this earlier in the season. This one is a hundred percent going to get stuck. Um, but I, I, I think it's even less of a penalty than than. Calvert Lewin's one against against mm. Newcastle. Like McNeil doesn't do anything. I think Clark's already slipping over. Um, can kind of get a little bit why it was given in real time, but as soon as you saw that first replay, it was just I think it was always going to get overturned, wasn't it? Most most surprised that it was. <laughs> most surprised yeah. that it was overturned. To be honest with you, Matt. Um, yeah, and you, you're right. It's those kind of situations that have gone against us as well. I mean, look, me, we we all argued to the point where you're going insane over with the the Ben and. Um, Calvert Lewin moment that happened at Goodison two weeks ago, but um, yeah, it was, the, it was the kind of thing that I saw. He's going to overturn this. He's going to he's going to give them a penalty here. Game's going to open up, and then we all know what's going to happen. When Everton have been two 0 in front, they're just going to capitulate. And it's well, that, that, that was it, a one 0 wasn't it? I think. I was sorry, yeah, it was one 0 yeah, yeah. do, do you know what? When games are on a knife edge like that, you just feel as if if that goes against us, it feels inevitable that Everton aren't going to win a game. So it shows you how high up on our on our agenda it is these days. You've got to get refereeing decisions go your way. And I know what the clubs or the fans of the clubs are going to complain about it. VAR, look, it's since it's since day dot, hasn't it? Since it's been here, there's been complaints about the way in which um, the way in which it's portrayed by referees and how they do it on the, the, the videos that they're able to see and things like that. But I, I think you're right. I think you you see it so nervously. You're thinking, yeah, that's going against us. As soon as the referee is blowing a whistle, either way, you're thinking that's going to go against Everton. And thankfully today, it didn't. And, um, you know, it deservedly didn't because Everton went and played well. Everton went and deserved three points away. How often have been able to say that? Well, yeah, we, have, we haven't been able to say that for, for 10 months at least. Uh, last time, are we going to jump in there? There we go. Uh, we'll, we, will, we will wrap it up there anyway. Oh, go on, sorry. No, I was just, I, I muted myself there. No, do you know what? One thing I thought. So just what? just to break it down at the end of the pod, you know I like to do that. You know he said um, that was our first away win since Burnley. After, after Burnley, we didn't win again till Burnley at home, did we? Oh God, yeah. So we cannot replicate <laughs> that one. When's it switch uh, next? When do we play? Third of May. May third. We can't. We cannot replicate that run. We won't. No, we'll absolutely not. We'll I'll draw we'll every game until then. We're on eight points from eight games now, aren't we, Sam? You there know, you go. I'll keep us up, so maybe it'll yeah. be fine. Um, but yeah, we'll wrap it up there anyway. Um, cheers to Dave and to Les. Like I said at the start, um, after a win, I'm sure everyone's in a great mood. So please leave us a good review. Please leave us a rating if you're listening. If you're watching us on YouTube, uh, do these a comment. Let us know what you thought of the game. Who stood out? Uh, what are your thoughts about Carver Lewin's performance? Uh, and hit like and hit subscribe as well. I'd like to be back on Monday for Blue Monday. Uh, me and Paddy will be back on Tuesday morning for uh, the byline. I'm sure everyone's really looking forward to hearing about Paddy's long journey there and back from Ipswich, um, as he loves to moan about that sort of stuff. So, yeah, do check that out earlier in the week. And yeah, we'll have all the usual content coming up as well as we reflect on a great three points for the Blues. Cheers, tune in, see us the reaction. We'll catch you again soon. Up the top, use.